Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back to our vascular sonography register review. Let's keep rocking this test. Question 26. The hands are pointing to a waveform indicating what phase of the cardiac cycle? A, atrial filling and diastole, B, atrial filling and systole, C, atrial contraction, or D, ventricular contraction. The answer is C, atrial contraction. There are four waveforms in hepatic vein flow. The A wave is caused when the right atrium contracts and causes blood to flow retrograde towards the liver, which will show a waveform above the baseline. The S wave is caused when the tricuspid annulus moves towards the apex of the heart during systole, causing blood to be pulled from the liver to the right atrium. The V wave is caused when the tricuspid valve closes and blood from the liver decreases, causing an equilibrium. And the V wave will be mainly below the baseline. And finally, the D wave is caused when the tricuspid valve opens, causing blood to passively fill from the right atrium to the right ventricle. Question 27. Which artery is being evaluated in this TCD image? A, middle cerebral artery, B, anterior cerebral artery, C, vertebral artery, or D, posterior cerebral artery? The answer is B, anterior cerebral artery. Question 28. What vein carries blood to the proximal end of this structure? A, left gastric artery, B, hepatic artery, C, hepatic vein, or D, portal vein? This ultrasound represents a TIPS procedure, or transjugular intrahepatic portal systemic shunt. These are created between the portal and the hepatic vein in patients who have cirrhosis. Question 29. Where is pressure the highest in this Doppler ultrasound? A, B, C, or need more information? Pressure is going to be the highest immediately following a stenosis. So A is the correct answer. Question 30. This diagram is an example of what condition? A. Homonymous hemianopia. B. Hemispatial neglect. C. Amaurosis fugax. Or D. Diplopia. The answer is A, homonymous hemianopia. What happens is you lose the right side vision in both eyes. Question 31. The red arrow is pointing to a hepatic vein waveform occurring in which cardiac cycle? A, ventricular systolic contraction. B, ventricular depolarization. C, atrial repolarization. Or D, ventricular diastolic relaxation. And the answer is D, ventricular diastolic relaxation. Question 32. Click in the area of the AV fistula where flow is mostly below the baseline. If you were shown an image like this on your boards, where would you click? The answer is right up here, the venous flow. 
So you can click anywhere up here and you'd be correct. Question 33. This ultrasound shows blood collecting where? A, between the tunica media and the tunica adventitia. B, between the tunica intima and the tunica adventitia. C, between the tunica media and the tunica intima. Or D, between the tunica intima and surus visceral. The answer is C, between the tunica media and the tunica intima. What happens in dissections is the tunica intima tears and then blood will pool in the area between the tunica intima and the tunica media. Question 34. The blue arrow is pointing to what phase of the cardiac cycle? A, atrial filling and diastole. B, atrial filling and systole. C, atrial contraction, or D, ventricular contraction. The answer is C, atrial contraction. Question 35. What is demonstrated in this ultrasound? A, vertebral artery occlusion. B, ipsilateral collateral blood flow. C, evidence of PCA flow reversal. Or D, subclavian still. The answer is D, subclavian still. You can see here that there's blue arterial and blue venous Doppler flow. From there, the sonographer fanned to the common carotid artery, which shows a red color Doppler, which means you know that your color box is not steered in the wrong direction, and you also know that your color scale is also correct. So this is an issue with the sonographer or the machine. What's happening here is this patient has reverse blood flow in their left vertebral artery, which is helping perfuse the patient's left arm, bypassing the subclavian steel on the ipsilateral or same side. Question 36. What is the best way to improve this Doppler image? A. Increase pulse repetition frequency. B. Increase wall filter. C. Decrease Doppler angle. Or D. Decrease color gain. The answer is D, decreased color gain. Question 37. Click in the area of this AVF where blood flow is disturbed and pulsatile. If you were shown this image, where would you click indicating disturbed and pulsatile flow? The answer is right here. So arterial blood flow will flow down through the anastomosis into the venous system, causing the venous blood flow to convert from a phasic flow to a more disturbed and pulsatile flow. So anywhere right here would be correct. Question 38. What is the best way to reduce this Doppler artifact? A, decrease color gains. B, decrease spectral gains. C, increase the wall filter or D, increase the angle from 60 to 90 degrees. This artifact is called crosstalk or spectral Doppler mirror imaging, which occurs when your Doppler angle is close to or at 90 degrees, or your 2D spectral gains are turned too high. So turn down your spectral gains 
and or reduce respect to Doppler angle? So the correct answer for this question is decrease your spectral gains. Question 39. Click in the area where thrombin is injected to treat the pseudoaneurysm. And the answer would be right here in the pseudoaneurysm sac. Question 40. Which of the following is a normal AV fistula flow? A. High volume, high resistance triphasic flow. B. High volume, low resistance monophasic flow. C. Low volume, low resistance biphasic flow. Or D. Low volume, high resistance to and fro flow. The answer is B, high volume, low resistance monophasic flow. Question 41, click in the area of this AV fistula where stenosis is more commonly found. The correct answer would be right here. This is the outflow tract or the outflow area. These areas are more susceptible to a stenosis. Question 42, click on the structure that connects the aorta to the common hepatic artery. The answer is right here. This is the celiac trunk or the celiac artery. And this will branch into the common hepatic artery and the left splenic artery. So right here. Question 43. What type of flow is demonstrated here? A, phasic, B, monophasic, C, biphasic, or D, pulsatile? The answer is D, pulsatile, which is caused by high central venous pressures from heart failure. Question 44. Once blood flow enters the area indicated by the arrows, blood flow will turn into what? A, turbulent flow, B, disturbed flow, C, parabolic flow, or D, plug flow. The answer is D, plug flow. Question 45. What does this Doppler waveform represent? A, obstruction upstream. B, obstruction downstream. C, venous insufficiency. Or D, collateral blood flow. This type of Doppler represents a continuous waveform, which indicates an obstruction downstream. Question 46. A patient presents to the hospital complaining of left arm numbness and left leg weakness. Which of the following below best explains this patient's symptoms? A. Multiple deep vein thrombi. B. Left extremity embolism. C. Right hemisphere CVA or D, left hemisphere hemiplegia.
The answer is C, right hemisphere CVA. Question 47. Which of the following is not a common symptom of this condition in the late stages? A, weakness, B, heaviness, C, itching, or D, burning? The answer is A, weakness. Weakness is not a common symptom of chronic venous insufficiency. Question 48. This patient presented to the emergency room complaining of extreme left arm pain and pallid looking skin. You perform an upper Doppler duplex and an upper PVR. Based on these findings, which of the following below is most likely the culprit? A, hemiparesis, B, hemiplegia, C, paresis, or D, ischemia. The answer is D, ischemia. Question 49. Which of the following settings should be adjusted first to eliminate this artifact? A, increase pulse repetition frequency. B, decrease color gain. C, increase wall filter. Or D, decrease Nyquist limit. This artifact is called ghosting or clutter artifact, which is caused by low level or low frequency Doppler shifts in the surrounding tissue and making the Doppler system believe that blood flow is within the tissue. The first setting you adjust is your wall filter by increasing it, and this will eliminate your low level frequency Doppler shifts. So you're gonna to wanna to increase your wall filter. Question 50. This ultrasound demonstrates a post-op procedure for what syndrome? A. Post-thrombotic syndrome. B. May-Thurner syndrome. C. Bluto syndrome. Or D. Lurishi syndrome. This ultrasound demonstrates a comifemoral vein stent, which is used for patients who have post-thrombotic syndrome. Well, this concludes our next 25 questions. However, I have a couple bonus questions for you, just in case you're taking your vascular boards here pretty soon. The first bonus question reads, what does the CT demonstrate? A, tips, B, IVC filter, C, AAA graft, or D, endovascular aneurysm repair, or EVAR. The answer is B, IVC filter. So you can see in this image right here, this is the IVC filter, and this is put in place for patients who have chronic DVTs. They leave it there so that if a DVT is ever to embolize, it'll come up through the inferior vena cava and get stuck right here to help dissolve the thrombus. Bonus question number two. This is the post-op reverse in situ patient who is here for a follow-up ultrasound. Based on the Stoppler analysis, what is going on? A, normal post-op ultrasound. B, occlusion downstream. C, occlusion upstream, or D, severe stenosis.
The answer is B, occlusion downstream. Bonus question number three. Where is resistance the highest in this diagram? Is it A in this area, B, C, or D? The answer is A here. Resistance is higher prior to the area where the vessel starts to narrow. From here, I'm gonna write 25 more questions and upload that video as fast as I can. If you're taking your vascular boards here pretty soon, feel free to email me at ultrasoundboardreview at gmail.com if you have any questions to what to expect on the boards. I would be more than glad to help you. I'm Jim with ultrasoundboardreview.com. Thank you so much for watching.